Hi there, and welcome back to LearnVisualFoxPro.com. Uh, in this lesson, um, uh, this is actually part two of a lesson that we started earlier, uh, looking at basic reporting. And so we saw in the last lesson how to create a basic report specifying items for the um, um, page header band, the detail band, and the footer band. Um, we also looked at um, uh, one of the benefits of not specifying an alias in your uh, report um, and also not specifying uh, at the table um, to be automatically open um, in the data environment. Um, actually, in this lesson, we'll be looking at using the data environment. One of the things I, I didn't do in the last lesson um, let's uh, set our working folder first. Uh, one of the things I didn't do was to show you that when we have a report um, uh, that does not have uh, a table specified in the data environment, Visual Fox Pro will prompt us to 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 open the table. Actually, I, I did show it now that I recall. Um, but let's just run through that again. So if I go report form uh, VFP six RPT T one. Um, if I don't specify, if I have not, if I did not open the table myself, the report would prompt me to open the table that I want to use to report against. In this case we use contact one and of course I could also use um, another table if the fields match up the ones that are specified in the designer. And so what we want to look at today is to have, instead of having the report prompts us if I did not open the table, is to have the report automatically open the table to report from. So we're going to look at associating the table with the report and so every time the report is run the the, um, the table will be automatically opened and closed um, if necessary. Okay, so let's uh, modify this report and create a new report from it. Uh, and so we'll save this as uh, report two. So to specify a data environment, or rather to specify that a table be associated with the report and is automatically open and closed, we go to View and we select the Data Environment option, and uh, we right mouse click on the Data Environment window, select Add, and then we choose the table that we want to report from. And the table specified here will always be open automatically by the um, data environment. I just wanted to quickly point out, I will not be getting into this right now, that there are properties that are associated with the data environment that you can uh, take a look at and play around with. Uh, there are methods uh, that are fired when a report is created and you can actually put your own code in here and, and do some, some really cool stuff, um, which I will look at and actually demonstrate um, in an, an advanced lesson. See, we have events that fire after the table is closed, before tables are open. So if you want to do setup, you can actually click on here and put code in here uh, to be executed prior to, to the report itself being run. And of course, the cursor itself, once it's added to uh, the data environment, the table is considered a cursor. And uh, the name, the alias of it is contact1. And again, it has its own events that you can um, tap into. Okay, but that's advanced stuff and if you are unwary, uh, please feel free to go ahead and experiment with that. Okay, so now that we've added our table, we'll close the data environment and uh, that will automatically open and close our table for us. So I did not in my field name specify an alias and we don't have to, so that's, that's okay. So I'll close the report designer and I'll close contact one. You saw that when I ran the report 
um, it prompted me for a name. I'll clear screen and I'll run report 2 this time. And I got no prompts. It automatically opened the contact 1 table and automatically closed it also. Now I want to point out a little gotcha um, with this. Um, let's open contact 1. If I currently have the table that I uh, that is also associated with the report open, note that my record point is on the first record. In fact, I'll move it to the second one, and I'll close the browse window. So I am on record point number two, record number two rather. If I were to run the report, uh, let's go ahead and run. Okay. And so you might have noticed that the time changed, though the information didn't show on the screen. Okay, let's clear the screen and run that again. And so the report is run. Um, because it's the same alias as the one specified in my report, the report pointer actually got moved. If I look down here, you'll see that it says end of file for this uh, table. And that could, um, could be a potential... Uh, bug in your code. You may find that your record is moving uh, when you run a report and you're not sure why that is happening. That's because the report writer by default, the scope for it is all. So it's going to report on all the um, the fields, sorry, all the records in your table <coughs> and um, thus moving the record pointer. One way to prevent that from happening is to have is to have the report open in a private um, data session. And to do that, let's go back and modify report 2. And it's pretty simple. We go to the report menu and we select private data session. And we simply close and save that. And so here we have the default data session. A private data session is simply a duplication of the default uh, data session, so to speak, but it's where um, you can think of it as a private instance of, 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 um, of Visual Fox Pro, uh, where you can open the same table again and it does not affect the table that is open in your your current or your default data session. I hope I didn't confuse you. I think I also explained this a little bit when we talked about forms. So if you've not seen that video, you may want to check it out to, to get a better understanding of data sessions. Okay, so let's demonstrate this again. So my record pointer did move to the end of file. I will now move it back to Mary Jane. I'll clear my screen. And so now report 2 is set to use a private data session. So uh, we will not see this. It will happen pretty quickly. But a new data session will be created. The contact 1 will be open in that private session. It will not affect the one that I'm working with that you're seeing here right now. And the report will be run um, and, and complete. And then I'll be placed back here without my record pointer moving from Mary Jane. So let's try that. Okay, so notice that I am still on record 2, though I've gone through all the records in the contact 1 table. So that's something you may want to make a note of to probably always specify the private data session. So that way, um, if you do have the, the table that you're reporting from open for other purposes in code, uh, you don't get subtle bugs introduced because the report Right, uh, the, when you run the report, it does move the record pointer as it goes from record 1 through to record n, n being the number of records you have in your table. Okay, so that's part 2. I just quickly want to switch over to um, Visual Fox Pro 9, but just before I go there, I want to show you uh, a benefit of adding the table to the data environment in version 6. Uh, it, is, it's, it behaves a little differently in version 9. When I, when I go to the report expression, if I click on the ellipsis button, now in my fields list I see um, all the fields of any table. If I had several tables open, they would all be listed here 
of course, I'm going to have to scroll down the list to find the field that I want. So now, when I, uh, if I wanted to add a new field, or the edit a field, uh, if I wanted date of birth, I could double click. And by default, when you select, it does automatically and will always add the uh, table alias for you. Uh, the option is there to turn it off, but it's not enabled in version 6, 7, or 8. Uh, it is available in version 9, however, so that's, uh, that's a plus there. So um, adding the table to the data environment, and I have to think about saying these things, uh, uh, gives us the added benefit of being able to select the field names from our table without having to manually um, key them in, as you saw me did in the first part of this uh, lesson. I keyed in all these field names manually because when there is no table associated with the report in the data environment, I do not get a list here. Okay, so let's switch over to uh, Visual Fox Pro 9. And uh, just to take a look at the interface and to point out uh, a, f a few differences at the basic level. Okay, so and I will modify the um, report to Back with compatibility, no problem opening up uh, report created in version 6 at all. And um, we can preview this and it works fine. Um, let me go ahead and just point out um, a few things here. So we'll create a report VFP 9, the RPT 1. And uh, let's open the data session window. Let's get uh, a contact one. Let's, okay, let's use friends. And uh, go back here. So uh, I'm going to drag and drop a field into the details band. Now one of the things, uh, first off, you want to notice that the, the um, expression or the field expression has now been changed to field properties. Uh, let's switch back to 6 here. What was it called? Modify report 6. I right, double click. Alright, so report expression. Notice the dialog here in version 6. This is all the way up through version 8. In version 9, it's a lot more prettier and a lot more um, feature rich. Okay, so here we specify the expression. Again, I can come here and you'll notice now that uh, this is a new report. I have not specified uh, my table to be a part of the data environment, yet I have the fields listed in here, which I think is pretty cool for when I'm designing. Um, if I don't wish to have the table being a part of the data environment, I get I get uh, this nice, nice little feature uh, there. Um, one more thing I want to point out here is also um, the option to notice that these are now turned on. I can say always add the alias. And so if I double click last name, it tells me that it's friends that last name. And of course, now here I have a drop down, which will, if I had multiple tables, I would see them in the drop down. Whereas over here, if I had multiple tables, they'd all be listed here going down. So uh, just some differences between version 9 and uh, prior versions. Okay, so I'll click OK and I'll accept that. Um, now, you know, it's, it's kind of weird because uh, if I were now to, let's save this, uh, let's go to View Data Environment, I don't have a table there. If I were to go and add a table, let's add the contact one, Okay, and um, let's close 
let's close uh, let's close friends and let's add a new field when I go to the uh, expression builder I have no fields listed here so uh, we're getting uh, the opposite behavior in version 9 in that fields that are in the global or the default work, work area are listed here fields that are in the um, data environment of the report are not listed at all okay so that's kind of weird um, you know but we'll live with it it's a small price to pay for all the other features that we get um, but one of the neat things about um, Visual Fox Pro is that we can always go back to old school we can always say you know what yeah this is all nice and good but give me the old way of doing things until I'm ready to to graduate to the new um, the new fandangles so we can actually turn off and there are two ways to do this we can use the uh, report uh, builder um, global variable and we can let it point to I can set it to nothing right now we can see that it's pointing to if I were to print this to a screen uh, close this. so right now it's pointing to C program files report builder app so this this new program that is written and written, obviously written in Visual Fox for itself is what gives us the new features um, of our report here so the report builder gives us all this new field properties and all that sort of stuff if we were to turn that off uh, two ways to do that we can go to tools options I can go file locations search for uh, report builder double click on this and simply delete it click in OK OK that would that would take it out so if I print you don't see it also too I could simply make reference to it here which is probably faster and enter a null string press enter key and then when I modify my report and double click on the field look our old friend is back the report expression and so it will behave um, as it did in, in prior versions version 8 and so forth okay and so when I click here now because contact is in the uh, um, data environment I get it listed here so that's pretty cool you can switch back and forth depending and what you're doing and when you need to I mean if you like uh, seeing the field list here and double clicking instead of having to type out all the fields that you have especially if you're using a database and the field names are a bit long winded uh, that's uh, I find that very helpful so uh, let me show you that so this is 9 and this is 6 and the expression builder looks the same once I turn off Visual Fox Pro's fancy report builder so we can turn it back on okay let's print that see if it looks the way we had it before yeah so that looks pretty good and so now voila we get our new fancy um, uh, styles and I'll be doing a lesson on the uh, Visual Fox Pro 9 report uh, designer in the future and to, to look at some of the cool things that we can now do with the, the new report but essentially um, that's it for reports in a nutshell uh, let's take this out because I no longer have friends so that's it for basic reporting